Are you a burnt out overachiever buried in responsibilities? Do you miss laughing with your friends, just laughing from the gut? Remember that? Do you feel like life's passing you by? If you've been wishing for some kind of shift, you're in the right place. Welcome to 52 Weeks of Hope, the show where we take you off the hamster wheel by ditching the to-do list for the to-don't list. This is where you get to learn how to make that lonely ache vanish, learn self-compassion techniques, and to give yourself grace. I'm Lauren Abrams, and I get to help you feel that magic again since going through my own dark night of the soul so you can learn from my experience and the mentors and experts I meet along the way. And today we're talking about how to stop your overwhelm, take a breath and get some relief now. You do get to manifest the life of your dreams. You get to live the life you dream about. Learn some tools to take a second for yourself and to live in joy. Stop feeling guilty. This is the only life that you get. I'm here to tell you right now how to stop wishing for anyone else's life, how to love your own, and how to get out of the overwhelm and breathe a great big sigh of relief, no matter what's going on and who's coming at you. (laughs) Welcome to 52 Weeks of Hope. So I've been saying yes to what's coming my way, even when my head says no, which it does a lot. I've been taught to suit up and show up for life anyway, regardless of what it is. And um, so yesterday, my friend was having an open house and it was her birthday and it wasn't right around the corner and LA traffic and all of that, but I really wanted to get there. I was cutting it close, but I was like, I got to go. I, I just, I want to show up for it, right? And I was able to make it. And I had a little bag of presents, nothing much. It, the card was great. And she agreed, she posted the card. But anyway, so I show up and she was having permanent jewelry. She had all these like creative things she did. She had artists work on the wall. The house was spectacular. And she had permanent jewelry, which I had to ask my daughter what that was. It doesn't have a, have a clasp on it. And on the way there, I was listening to Stacy Lauren do the thing podcast. But I was listening this. She sent me, I, I want to do this as the least wordy way possible, but it's just such a great story. I couldn't wait to share it um, about it, where she has her listeners do these challenges and uh, dares different things like dating challenges or make a podcast. And so on this dating challenge, for example, instead of online dating, where you do different things, you, you go and talk to strangers. Like she was talking about doing thumb wars with strangers. And, and she was talking about going up to a stranger and she videoed herself doing it to prove like, you can do this. You can go and talk to somebody and not somebody dangerous or anything. But anyway, and just all these different challenges. And in researching her, I came across somebody that I have to interview for 52 Weeks of Hope. This guy who wrote a book about having these these parties for two hours, two hours social events, whatever you want to call it, where you have 15 people over for two hours and everyone wears name tags. And if you tell them in advance that you wear name tags, evidently nobody has a problem with it. And uh, you just serve cocktails and appetizers and, and you do these icebreakers. It just sounded so fun. And anyway, so I'm talking to these girls that do the permanent jewelry at the open house and I'm telling them about, oh yeah, I have a podcast for two weeks, I hope. And I was telling them what I listened to on the way there and about these two-hour parties and also about these dares or challenges. And they they got all excited like I did. They go, let's do it. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I must have manifested this on the way there. So we're now in a group chat text and we're going to plan an event and a challenge. And I'm so excited about it. They're so cute and so dynamic. And that's because I showed up at this open house to support my friend. And I'm so excited about it. And I, I will report every for the way of it on here. And I also think, I don't know whether to create a separate Facebook group or, but definitely join the Facebook group because it seems like that's the most intimate way that we can all support each other and do these challenges because I definitely want to do these dares or challenges. And um, it just, it just seems so fun <laughs> that um, I, I'm in, I want to do this. So anybody else who wants to do it, like, let's do that. The Facebook group just seems like the easiest way to do that so we can see each other and just at least talk to each other and then find other areas where we can actually connect as well. So, and I'm open to other places besides that, but it seems like that's a good way where everybody can talk to each other and knows how to use it. So that was what I gathered from listening to this. So anyway, taking that breath and manifesting what you really want to do. Because when I compiled a list of all the messages of hope that I've been given and into eight overarching themes, the top are, we need to be a community. 
we need to physically see each other and be together. So we can't isolate. And I, I know how hard that is because I work from home now and I see people on Zoom and I feel like I'm not isolating. I see you on Zoom, but it's not true. And that I was reminded of that when I when I met these other people yesterday and how lifted up and, and motivated I was and kind of on fire for things and, and happy and really filled with joy. And so I lately I've been writing, what do I want next year to look like? What do I want my work life to look like? And just writing it out. And it makes such a difference. And it's not something to add to a to-do list or anything else. It's what fills me with joy. Um, what makes me happy? What do I like to surround myself with? What do I want it to look like and feel like? And really, that's the key. It's it's not what other people think or anybody else's dreams. I mean, I could ask other people, what do you like? And what do you think I should have? But that's, I know what's right for me and what fills me up and how much downtime do I need? How much do I need to be around other people? How much do I need to be in nature or walking? Because those are the things that I enjoy. But I also know it takes something to kickstart me because I I also have a head that's like, nah, I'd rather just stay here and get things done and, and work more. And I'm really making an effort to stop my work at a certain time because as a creator, everything kind of lights me up and I want to try this and I want to try that. And I need to reel myself in and stop at a certain time so I can recharge. So I know I have limitations and, uh, and to reel myself in and to be of service to others. That's also super important. And so community, love and service are the top. Those are the things that keep us healthy and happy and fill us with joy. Even if we think it's looking pretty and skinny or whatever it is that like society says we should value, but it's, it, it's definitely helping others. A hundred percent of the time you will feel better if you are of service in some way that that's just a given and being around like-minded people and finding that community will help you. So to manifest your dreams, you have to get really clear on what they are. And um, and listening to, to Stacey Lauren it, with her community and everything else, it's stepping out of your comfort zone. Just this is a thing. If they, I was thinking a way to ask you this, like, what is your fear of somebody finding out about you? Because I, I know what mine sure was for years, years until I started this podcast. I thought if anybody ever found out this one thing about me, I mean, I would cringe at it. And uh, I just kind of kept it in my back pocket and didn't want people to know, even though it's just a part of my life and it, it is what it is. But are there things about you that you would cringe and you just really rather people not know? Guess what? No one cares. And I don't mean that in a mean way. It's just, I, and, and I just talked about it on this episode when I was on somebody else's podcast because I don't care anymore. And it, it's just, and it, mine was that I went, was in rehab and it's now been decades. But I always thought if somebody found that out about me, I'd be judged or this, that. Nobody flinches. Nobody cares. They just go on with, oh, okay. It, I don't even know if it's that interesting a fact, but maybe they think about it and then they move on. They don't They don't care. <laughs> so whatever I, I could tell you about, you know, so whatever yours is, people go, oh, okay. But actually it could open the door to interesting conversations because I just don't care anymore because I know nobody's judging me. I was the only one judging me or what I thought you might judge me for or anything else. And now I think, oh, maybe I can help somebody because I help people in that community anyway. So if anybody ever needs help, you know that you can reach out to me and maybe I can help them. And maybe it just doesn't even have the stigma it used to. I have no idea. But anyway, so whatever it is, it makes you cringe that what if somebody found out about this thing in your past? No one cares because those things are what made you into who you are today. And nobody's paying attention anymore anyway. I don't know if they ever did, but everyone has something. Every, we all go through things in our life and nobody is paying that much attention. Attention. So just breathe, breathe, and be sure to surround yourself with that white light. Just do that. If you've got people coming in and coming at you, just surround yourself with that white light. One of the guests said she surrounds herself with pink light. If pink light works for you, whatever color works for you, just surround yourself with that light as a protectant and fill yourself with that. And just close your eyes and breathe. Breathe into that. We could do a meditation challenge. <laughs> that would be really fun. And, and whatever fills you with joy, write that down. Write that down and remember that. And then go towards that. Go towards that, which brings you joy and lights you up. I mean, I know everything isn't like that, but whatever you focus on grows. And whatever you tell yourself, you're right. So keep those in mind. Those, those are just truths. And you want to go towards those things that light you up. I was listening to people who were talking about wanting to do live events and be a speaker. So they started going where live events and speakers were and asking, so how did you start doing this? Which is really easy to find that out because 
everyone posts, they did that or who's putting it on. And you can then go and find those events and start hanging out at them. And that's how they began doing speaking at live events and putting them on themselves. So there's a way to do all of these things. And, and we could do challenges for that if, if, if that's what you guys would like to do. That's also people's biggest fears. That's the, is it the Jerry Seinfeld joke? Um, it's everyone's biggest fear. It's a bigger fear than die. His joke is like, oh, you'd rather be dead than speaking at a funeral or something. I don't know. Anyway, it's a bigger fear than death, I guess. But you want to breathe. You need to make sure that you're taking that breath. And that if you take the time, the pause to really pause, answers emerge in the pause. God is also in the pause. And so taking that breath, that's where the answers come. So it could be taking a walk around the block without a device. I talk about that a lot or anywhere just to to put all electronics down. That's where you can be like, oh, person isn't good for me. Maybe I shouldn't be around that person. That person doesn't make me feel good. That person doesn't light me up. I want to be around these people that are supporting me and saying, well, let's see, how can you make that dream happen? Let's look up ways to do that. You'd be great at this. Those are the people that you want to be around, not people that are going, why would you do that? How are you going to do that? What if you don't make enough money? The money will come. Money always comes. It just does. If you work, you don't just sit around thinking about it and you're working, the money will come. Like it it just does. If you're like excited and you're working and you see that there's a way to make money, there's just, it just does. It's a matter of putting your energy in the right place. You could work three days a week and make a ton of money. That's not the issue. The issue is being around the right people and putting the energy in the right way and in the right direction. So what is it that you really want to do? What lights you up? And are you taking that pause? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you taking that breath? Are you breathing in and then breathing out slowly? Are you doing the things that light you up and fill you with joy? There's three most important things that you have to do in a day. Write them down the night before and do those. Just get them out of the way. Know what they are. Do those and get them done. That that way you're not in overwhelm. They're done and you can move forward with the things that you're trying to create. As you do each one, just stay focused on that one item. Once you finish the first one, then move on to the second most important. And then the third, don't do all three at the same time. Don't have a whole bunch of tabs open on the computer. Keep your phone away and get each of those three done. You will feel great. You will feel accomplished and then you have them done and then you're not in overwhelm. And remember, just take five minutes in between And just close your eyes and breathe. Set a timer for five minutes. It is amazing what that does. Just breathing in for four, breathing out for four. And putting your hand on your heart. That's what I'm doing. I realize I'm not talking about what I'm doing. Put your hand on your heart, breathe in for four, breathe out for four. It's so soothing. Whatever you're feeling, it belongs. It's part of you. It doesn't mean it's a fact. I, the way I it was described to me when I was taught my feelings aren't facts is a close friend, friend of mine died and I felt like she had abandoned me. And I was told she didn't, she didn't abandon me. She died, but I felt abandoned. So that's the feelings aren't facts. So breathe in for four, breathe out for four. With your hand on your heart, breathe in for four, breathe out for four. And that is a quick tool to get away from the overwhelm. Delegate everything you can. Just give it to someone else to do. Does it have to be done today? Probably not. If it does, put it in the one of the top three things that have to be done and then do those one at a time and then breathe. And then you can work on what it is you want to manifest. The things that light you up and bring you joy. And as long as you put 15 minutes towards those, You're working towards your goals and your dreams and the things that you really want to do and be clear on them and step out of your comfort zone and take action towards it. And let's do dares and challenges. Do you want to start a podcast? Let's do it. You don't have to have everything set up. You can just get on Zoom and start recording and uh, start a podcast. Uh, I didn't, I mean, I didn't, I just started. (laughs) Um, You don't really need much of anything. And uh, the whole thing is just to start. And if you build it, they will come. It's that whole thing is to start, is to take an action. As soon as you start taking action, the universe just rises to meet you. That's why I say 15 minutes of energy towards what it is that you want to dream. Life's in session. You know, this is it. There's no dress rehearsal. This is it. So if you have something you want to do, now's the time to do it. That was another one of the messages. So I was trying to make an acronym with with all the messages. So I don't know how well this is, but I did... Caring. I'm not, this is a somewhat of an acronym. 
from the messages I compiled, you can definitely give me your feedback on this. Community is the C that we need community, which I talked about. A is for always love because love was the second biggest message. Remember service is the R. Remember service. Service is being of service to others. The I is it all works. And that means whatever modality you feel called to, it all works. Yoga, breath work, tapping, EFT tapping, whatever you feel called to, meditation, which you listen to this podcast, you know how big I am on meditation and journaling. I think those are the two best ways to get centered, to get out of overwhelm and to get to your inner truth. Um, The N is for the pause. We need the pause and is for needing the pause. The G is go for it. Life's in session. Just do it. This is your time. If God gave you a dream, he put God put some dream in your head. There's a reason for it. I'm paraphrasing Angela, Angela Manuel Davis. She always said, if God gave you a dream. There's a reason for it. I, that, I do such bad imitations. But anyway, you hopefully you get the idea. The G is for go for it. Life's in session. Just do it. Now's your time. So that's caring. I, I don't know that I got all of them in there, but I was trying to come up with an acronym for um, at least some of the messages from my compilation of 52 Weeks of Hope. You can stop the overwhelm. You can take a breath and you can manifest your dreams. There's a reason that you've got them. So go for it. Now is your time. Surround yourself with that white light. Keep away the naysayers or anyone that's coming at you and manifest what it is that you really want to do because you can do it. And we can do it together as a challenge. Go to the Facebook group, join us in there, and I'm going to figure out how to get in there with you. And um, and let's do this. And I will report back on what happens when I meet with these people. And we're going to throw one of these two-hour parties. I'm going to report back every single bit of it. Um, and then let's all do this together. DM me, send me, a, get, make sure you're on the email list. I'll send emails about this too. And that is it for today. I can't wait to report back. Um, let me know what you're struggling with. I'll make sure I've got some great episodes coming up. 